Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. Hear the story. In this story hidden tab exposed my wife's cheating with her dominant boss, ghosted her and made her life miserable. I've been married to my wife, Jilly, for 11 years. Prior to that, we dated for more than 7 years. We shared a very healthy and understanding relationship. We have always been each other's friends. We were college buddies before we started dating. Everything was going fine in our life until Jilly got a new boss, John. The first week of his joining, Jilly comes back home and goes nonstop about him. She talks about how he's such a nice boss, appreciating and nurturing every employee, making everyone feel good about themselves, and how he's so caring and visionary about employees' futures, blah, blah, blah. Initially, I heard it with enthusiasm, but then it started bothering me because she no longer asked about my day. I thought it was temporary, and she would soon stop gushing over him. It happened that way. After a few weeks, she did stop talking about him, but she also stopped talking to me. Yes, she got cold and distant from me. Not something very evident or noticeable but in a subtle way. I think I didn't pay heed to her changed behavior immediately. But now that I know the entire story and look back, I think I got a cold vibe at the start. I didn't figure out that it was cheating. I only noticed it when it became persistent, and she showed some other red flags. She soon started coming home late from work very often. This was also not unusual because she is into finance, and during some banking cycles, she used to work overnight and until late hours. She started going out more with her work friends. Again, this was quite normal because we both hang out with our work friends. You see, she wasn't doing anything very different, just that she was doing all this stuff more than before, and she was neglecting me. She became resentful of me. Our sex life became non-existent. I was getting a vibe that something was wrong. But one doesn't start suspecting their partner at the drop of a hat. I discussed this with my close friends. And they said it might just be a phase. And every couple goes through these ups and downs now and then, so I shouldn't be worrying. They suggested that I should rekindle my marriage and do something romantic for her. One of my friends suggested that I recreate our old memories because women like this stuff. Our anniversary was not anytime soon, nor was it her birthday. My best friend reminded me that the anniversary of our graduation day was next week, and on that same day, Jill and I had our first sex. We had sneaked out of the graduation party and went to her grandparents' place, who were out of town. That night, I had made her favorite hamburgers, so I decided to recreate that stuff. I came home early from work, made her hamburgers and apple pie, bought lilies and white wine and decorated the living room with fancy dim lights, all of it, her favorite. She comes home and is delighted to see all the arrangements. She hugs me and kisses me like crazy, I tell you. It was all fakey because a few minutes into this, she makes a puppy face, and I ask her what happened. She said that she actually came home to change. Her colleagues were throwing a farewell party for one of the senior managers, and she had to leave. Obviously, I got upset, but she assured me that she would be back in a couple of hours. I said okay and didn't create a scene. It was 8 when she left, promising to come back before midnight. Her two hours became four, but I didn't say anything. I kept waiting until midnight, but there was no sign of hers. I wanted to call or text her, but my self-respect stopped me. Finally, at 2, I shut down all the lights, kept all the food in the container, and went to sleep. I was feeling stupid for trying this hard to get my marriage on track, but it looked like it was just me who was trying. It was already dawn when she slowly crawled into the room and slipped into the bed. She made bare movements not to wake me up. I pretended to be asleep. When she woke up in the morning, I asked her when she came last night, and very casually she said it was around 1.32 am I gave her a cold stare and said that I was up until 2.30. She said she was drunk and tired and didn't remember the exact time, but it was definitely before dawn. It was a plain lie. Before I could say anything, she acted defensive. She said, why are you interrogating me in this way? This isn't the first time I went out with work friends, and you two go out with yours. What's so big a deal about it? She was right, there was no big deal about it, but the circumstances at which all these were happening were definitely messy. Not very proud to admit this, but the next day, I snooped into her phone. I straight went to see the chats with John, her boss. I didn't find anything filthy, but I sensed that the chats were deleted in between because the conversations halted abruptly. I checked her gallery but couldn't find anything. I scrolled through all the chats. There was a group chat between the people who went to the party last night. I found that everyone's last text that they had reached home safely came before 12, except for John and my wife. When everyone pushed off before midnight, what the hell was she doing for the whole night with John? Any confrontation with this half-baked information was useless, so I started hunting for more evidence. I got a GPS tracker to install in her car, but the task was securing her car off her eyes. I asked her if the car needs servicing or so. 
She seemed very guarded about it, more guarded than her phone. It made me suspicious. So, when she was asleep, I sneaked into her car to install the GPS device, and something in me pushed me to scavenge her car, and I did that. I found a tab hidden in the back seat. Luckily, it didn't need any password, and I was able to access the file. Oh my god, what I saw next made me throw up. There were naked pictures and videos of Jilly, which she had sent to her boss. Not only that, there were videos of her boss sending her instructions on different types of kink positions, how he wanted the videos, and how he would be treating her in the next session. I took all of those as evidence and slipped off the car. I didn't have the strength to go home and see her, on which her boss had been coming. I went to my friend and showed him a glimpse of those pictures. He was our common friend from college. And he too was shocked to find Jill involved in such activities. He patched me up with a lawyer because I was too distorted to do that myself. His distant cousin was a divorce lawyer, and we were able to ditch the queue and get a slot on the same day. The lawyer started the paperwork on the grounds of infidelity but said it would take two weeks to process it. I was just not ready to go home. My friend offered me a place in his spare room, and I accepted. I dropped her a text that I would be off for a work trip for ten days. She responded with just an okay. Now I'm just waiting for the divorce papers to arrive so that I can shove that on her face and get out of this. Update. One thing took an unexpected turn during that 15-day wait period. I already had all the evidence of cheating, so tracking her car was useless. Yet, I did that. As soon as she got to know that I was out of town, she rushed to her kink lover's place to give him a suck. I tracked her for a week or so, but then suddenly the device stopped fetching the data, and I got a text from Gilly. So this is your plan, followed by a series of apologies and promises of breaking things off with Bose and becoming a good wife. I ignored all of it. I wanted to ghost her, but now my plan was ruined. This made me angrier. I blocked her from all channels but emailed her that she would be receiving the divorce papers soon, and all communication between us should happen through my lawyer. When the papers reached her, she again spammed my inbox. Gradually, the apologies changed into pleadings where she requested for one last meeting before signing the papers. She even threatened that she wouldn't sign it until I met her once. My lawyer suggested that if one meeting could expedite the process, then I should consider it. I agreed to meet at a public place. She came with puffy eyes and a miserable face. She started the conversation saying, I know I ruined everything. I feel disgusted about myself. I'm a bad person and don't deserve forgiveness. I'm not sure if this going to help, but I have left the job and have stopped seeing that man. I said, it doesn't really matter to me. I sat quietly, and she kept ranting about the same stuff, how she was so sorry about the entire thing. She nudged me for a response, and I asked her just one question. Why? She broke down again and struggled for words. I cautioned her to speak the truth and no manipulation. She said the boss had an enchanting personality and had an aura to attract anyone in the office. Women were gushing over him, but he showed his interest in me. I felt like a winner. He made advances on me and said that I was the most attractive one in the office, and he couldn't shake his head away from me. I fell for it. He was a dominant personality and often gave me submissive tasks a plus rated, which brought a thrill down my nerves, and I enjoyed it. I asked that she was never into BDSM. And in the initial years of marriage when I suggested it, she refused it, and I accepted her decision. Then what had happened now? She said it was different. It was thrilling because John could have chosen anyone in the office. The young women were luring over him, but he chose me, a woman older than him. I felt special and competitive and did everything to please him. She closed by saying, I know all this is disgusting, but you wanted to know the truth, and this is the truth. She tried to shift the blame on the boss that he manipulated her into this, which might be true to some extent, but the bigger and uglier truth was that she enjoyed it. She sobbed uncontrollably, berating herself. I won't deny that I felt a pang of sympathy witnessing her in such a wretched state, but I remained resolute. Rising to my feet, she grasped my hand, seeking the slightest possibility of reconciliation. Firmly, I declined and departed. Two days later, she dispatched the duly signed divorce papers along with the house key to my lawyer, accompanied by a lengthy, heartfelt email bidding me farewell. That email stirred deep emotions in me, reducing me to tears like an infant. She, the woman I had cherished for numerous years, had dealt me this blow. Imagining a life without her is heart-wrenching, yet it is the path I've chosen for us. The divorce proceedings are underway. Whether I can ever truly move on remains uncertain, for my love for her persists. However, considering the way she has trampled over me, I doubt I'll ever allow her to come close again. Thank you for providing unwavering support. I'll keep you updated on any developments in the threat. Second story, unwittingly ruining the mistress's birthday party. 
This is a situation from my younger, more naive days when I failed to recognize I was being deceived until later. There was a particular restaurant I had longed to visit. My husband informed me that his friend, a girl within our social circle, had invited us to her birthday party there with about 25 guests. The birthday girl, accompanied by her lookalike sister whom I had never met, gave off strange vibes. They couldn't seem to stop laughing at me. While she was typically superficially polite, that night was different. Despite residing in a large city, a few months after our move, she coincidentally found an apartment on our same street, just two buildings down. Once again, my youth played a role in my obliviousness. As the party unfolded, it descended into chaos due to unrelated reasons involving cocaine, alcohol, and drama. Feeling a certain impulsivity, I decided to worsen the situation. I struck up a friendship with her most attractive female friend, who was under the influence of cocaine and promptly began gossiping about the birthday girl. She then invited me to the ladies' room. The four of us found ourselves locked in a unisex stall when I heard my husband attempting to break down the door because one of the four people was a guy. The situation became a source of amusement for everyone, and I stepped outside for a cigarette, even though I didn't smoke. My husband, visibly upset, demanded to know if I was cheating on him with the guy in the stall. Witnessing this, the birthday girl burst into tears and fled. Later, I learned that several guests had neglected to bring presents or contribute tips, leaving her to cover all the expenses and resulting in a ruined night for her. Subsequently, I discovered that he had been cheating with her even before we got married and throughout our eight-year marriage. He went on to marry someone new after our divorce. I can't help but wonder if the birthday girl is still a part of the picture. Thanks for joining us on this chapter of Relation Tales. If you were moved by these stories, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Don't miss out on the upcoming emotional roller coaster of relationships. Your support means the world, and we can't wait to share more compelling tales with you. Until next time, remember, every relationship has a story worth telling. See you soon.